Lian Li 011 Air Mini. It's a slightly misleading name because this allegedly mini case will actually support an E80X motherboard, depending on the internal configuration, but we'll come to that in a short while. Compared to a regular O11, it's relatively small, but still it's a dual chamber case, it's wide, it supports a huge amount of hardware, it's just more mini than a regular O11 or indeed an O11 XL. It's quite cheap, 100 pounds or euros, 110 US dollars in black, add 10 for white. Let's pull off some panels and dive inside. Two thumb screws, off with the top panel. And that means that we can simply lift the main glass panel and away in that familiar 011 manner. The right hand panel, two thumb screws, pull it back, lift it. With the panel off, you can see one, two, three, four screws which engage in these cutouts and slots. So the panel uh, is basically keyed into the main chassis. And there's a logo plate that demonstrates the O11Air Mini was designed by Adair Bauer. We know Roman, we like Roman. Walking through one of the suites at CES 2020, I bumped into Roman, Adair Bauer. Roman is a part of Thermal Grizzly and as far as I'm concerned is the king of liquid metal. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally never seen him silence before. The front panel also lifts and away to give access to the two included front fans. And you will notice a 120 at the rear. So we've got PWM 140s at the front, PWM 120 at the rear. The 011 dynamic I previously worked with came with no fans. So this is a significant step up. But just take a look at this rear panel covered in thumb screws. We're familiar with that panel, which covers two full-size drive caddies. But what about these thumb screws? The entire rear panel can be removed. If you're prepared to lose the two lower expansion slots, i.e. lose your ATX support and move the rear panel down, essentially we're now talking micro ATX, perhaps mini ITX, you can open up a load of space in the roof of the case for a super chunky radiator. And yes, you're quite correct. If you're moving the motherboard down inside the case, that does indeed mean you need to move the motherboard tray. Leanne's taken a slightly different approach. They've included multiple mounts for the motherboard, as you can see. So they have thought this through. Uh, what else to consider before we get into cooling? So around the back, we have a housing for a full-sized ATX power supply, and we have mounts for SSDs, or I suppose, if you must, two and a half inch hard drives, but realistically, SSDs. So cooling. The Mini essentially is restricted to 240mm or possibly 280mm radiators. In this instance, you're restricted to a 240 or 280 in the roof, a 240 in the side, a 240 or 280 in the floor, and a 240 or 280 in the front. So that's absolutely great, but there's a little wrinkle to consider. We've been sent this accessory pack of offset brackets. Uh, so we can move the radiator in the roof to one side, away from the memory. And the notes that we've been supplied tell us this means you may be able to install a 360 radiator in the roof. At the moment, we don't have a price for RB001 accessory. I'm going to estimate £10, Euros, dollars, no great price. Before I get busy installing hardware, I'm just going to point out on the aesthetics front. So the case is mainly steel. That panel is aluminium and this panel also aluminium, power button, headset jack, USB type C, pair of USB type A's. The hardware going inside the case, we've got an MSI Mag B560M Mortar Wi-Fi motherboard. I'm in five slot mode, so Micro ATX, Core i9 11900K, Sabrent Rocket 4.0 SSD. We've got some Trident Z RGB memory from G-Skill. 
I'm going to use an EK quantum magnitude block. Uh, we'll see how liquid cooling works in this PC. And then power supply. I'm going to go for a Seasonic Focus Platinum 850 watt. Once that hardware's in, then I'll take a look at which radiator easily fits in the roof of the case. My eyes are telling me the odds of getting a 360mm radiator in the roof of the case with or without those accessory brackets, it, it just seems unlikely. Uh, however, a 240 or 280, I'm quite sure that'll be no trouble whatsoever. funny thing when I'm installing a CPU or an SSD I often go quiet that sometimes I forget to breathe motherboard assembly and now it's time for the CPU block Arctic MX5. And on with the EK block. That looks the part. Motherboard assembly installed, we've got plenty of space exactly as we would expect. Around the back, power supply cables, no trouble whatsoever. I'm using an M.2, so I've not installed any storage in this area here. Don't forget, hard drives would go in there, which is this kind of looks like it's a second power supply caddy there. So installing extra storage would be dead straightforward. My graphics card is a Palette EK3080 with full nickel block. Worth pointing out, Lian Li does have an optional vertical graphics mount. They say it suits either Gen 3 or Gen 4, given all the grief that we've experienced with Gen 4 risers. I'm not going there. I'm just going to have a horizontal installation and then I'm going to look at cooling. Graphics card installed and I'm taking a chance and using a double headed cable to power my RTX 3080. Sometimes that doesn't work and you have to run a second cable to the second connector. So, fingers crossed. Right, cooling. I'm going with an Alpha Cool 30mm thick 280 radiator. That can very easily mount in the roof of the case, probably with the unions at the front, or indeed at the front of the case. Remember, we've got a pair of 140s at the front, so mounting a rad there, 280 rad at the front, would make sense. EK pump res. It's uh, actually powered by the PWM connector. Maybe mount that there. At which point this case starts to fill up. None of this hardware is huge. And the name Mini starts to make more sense to me. However, I'm liking it. I'm not going to bother with these offset brackets because I don't see any need for them. Uh, the note I had about the offset brackets possibly having a 360 radiator on the roof I think is just a typo. I want to install this pump reservoir bracket assembly on the inside of the lower fan. Getting access to the screws there, problematic. However, remove a few screws from the front of the case and now I can pull out each of the fans on its mounting frame. So I can secure the pump res and the bracket like thus. Reinstall it, dead easy. Nice work, Lian Lee. So far, so good. Next up, the radiator assembly. 
and it's a delight to see plenty of space in the roof of a case when usually I'm quibbling about five mil here or there. Feed the fan cables through. That's gonna work. Screw the rad assembly in place and connect up my tubing. The tubing I'm using is EKZMT, which is black rubber. I could go for clear coolant, but my preference I've decided is EK Cryofuel Solid White. After a brief BIOS update for the MSI motherboard, I was ready to get testing, and I was horribly unfair to the Lian Li 011 Air Mini. I've got an Intel Core i9 11900K and an RTX 3080, both being cooled by a single 280mm radiator and a slim 280 rad at that. That's not fair. This system under full noise with Cinebench R23 and Times by Stress Test running simultaneously pulled 580 watts at the wall socket. That's not nice. And yet despite that, it did a really good job. I tested with the fans in two configurations. First, with the fans running at full speed. and then with the fan slowed to what was meant to be 50%, but bizarrely, it actually meant all the fans were running at 850 RPM, which is slightly over 50%, but all at the same speed. Quite strange that. Nonetheless, with the fans at 100%, the system was reasonably noisy. With the fans at about 50%, the system was really quiet. The chart I'm showing you has delta temperatures, i.e. temperatures over ambient. The ambient only went up by one degree between the two runs, but I want to be crystal clear with the figures I'm showing you. So initially the CPU was actually running at 85 Celsius and the GPU at 56. When I slowed the fans to about 50%, the CPU temperature rose to 90 degrees and the GPU to 61 degrees allowing for the one degree difference in ambient, that's a four degree change in delta. Those temperature figures indicate that this case flows air very nicely. However, the nature of the compact system with a single radiator means that you can see that differential in temperatures when you change fan speeds. Let us look at the pros and cons. Pros, excellent design. I really like the design of this case. The slightly unusual thing is it favors micro ATX and that's something we very rarely see. Airflow is good. Air flows through every blooming panel and it's filtered with it. I like it. The dual chamber nature means there's loads of space for cables and for storage drives in this side of the case. The price is very reasonable. Considering it includes three fans, it, it's very, very reasonable. And then we come to the cons. The user manual, it needs work. I've told Leanne Lee this and they know it. The other thing is the form factor. It's a wide case, it's dual chamber. You put it on your desk, it takes up a lot of space. You put it on the floor, it's gonna kind of get lost. So the physical shape of the case is gonna make it awkward to accommodate. In terms of cons, that's it. This is really good. It's a must have. It's a nine out of 10. I like it.